So this one, just the name sounds really messed up. Mixed number coefficients and negative coefficients. Okay, don't freak out. Okay, so basically what you're doing is learning algebra problems, but now you're doing fractions within those. So that's what basically you're doing, okay? So, so far, if I said 4x equals 8, just to quickly review, what would I do? 8 divided by 4 in order for me to get 2, right? Okay, don't freak out, but instead of whole numbers, we are going to put fractions in. Okay, so the very first one is 4 fifths times x equals 7. Now, they, they did put one whole number in there just starting out. Haven't we done these before, like in an investigation or something? Yeah, because I thought... You may have. Investigations, I don't count. So if you actually learned it, then great. Yeah. Okay, so this may be review, and that's okay. Don't you try to decimal function? You can, but I'm going to teach you a different way, okay? So watch what you're going to do. All right, so what does this say? Four fifths times x. Times x. Even though you can't see the times, okay, I'm going to go in and put it in there if that helps you. Okay, now, does anybody remember about me talking and saying I need to get the x by itself for, figure, to, for us to figure out what x is, okay? And right now it says times four fifths. But when I move it across the equal sign, times four fifths would become the opposite. What is the opposite of timesing something? Dividing something. So instead of it being times 4 fifths, I'm going to divide by 4 fifths. Now this looks funky because it's not something you're used to seeing. Okay? Um, I also have taught you that maybe I, I, I have done that before where I cross out the 4 fifths. So if you are comfortable with that by changing the times to divide, if you're not comfortable with that just when you bring something over the equal sign, you're going to do the opposite um, it's called the inverse operation. So if you're multiplying, you're going to divide. If you're adding, you're going to subtract. Okay? When you take it across the equal sign, you have to do the opposite. Okay, so now we've got x equals 7 divided by 4 fifths. What should I do? I cannot leave it like you this. You can. Make seven into a fraction. You seven can. You can. There's one simpler way. Seven, change 7 to 7 over 1, so let's go in and do that. And divide it. Well, you can't divide, but you have to change it and multiply. I need to write this out horizontally, because right now it's all messed up. I, there's no way I can figure this out. So watch what I do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put 7 over 1 divided by 4 fifths. Okay? Does this say the same thing as this? Yeah. Yes, and now it's in a, pl a place that we know what to do with it because we've worked these before. Yeah, so what will I do from times here? Five, four, I'm going to change this to times, and when I do that, I have to change the number to the right to its reciprocal. Does everybody remember this now? So now I do 7 times 5 is 35. 1 times 4 is 4. Okay? You have to reduce it. Then you're going to, well, this one won't reduce because it's an odd and even, but... Um, we can need to make it into a, a mixed number. So 4, 35 divided by 4, what is it? 8 and 3 fourths. That's right, because 32 through 3 fourths, 5. Yep, good job. So the final answer would be 8 and 3 fourths. So you would tell me x equals 8 and 3 fourths. Okay? For some reason in this book, they start like halfway through, or actually about this time, where they're not changing improper to proper I still want you to continue okay if you know if you're on your test you can even circle both or just show me that you've done both okay and that way when the book shows me this I'll still see it okay all right let's do a few more and see how you're doing see if you feel like you've got a hang of it okay you think you got it all right so here's another one three and a third x equals five Okay, again, this one's a little bit different because it's not in, it's in fraction form, but it's actually in mixed number form. Okay, what should I do first? Make it, Make it improper. improper. Very good. I'm so glad y'all said that. Three times three is nine. Nine plus one is ten. So ten thirds times x equals five. Okay, now, what do I need to get by itself? 
the X. The X. And in order for me to do that, I need to get rid of times 10 over 3. How do I get rid of it? I'm going to move it to the other side. And when I do that, instead of it being times 10 thirds, I'm going to become, it's going to become divide by 10 thirds. Right? Everybody's with me? Okay. Good stuff. So I moved it. Now, what's my next step? You put 5 over 1 and then you divide it by 10 over divided 3. Divided by 10 over 3. Very good. And then it would be 15 over Does everybody 10 see how I'm making this one longer than this one? Yeah. It's so, I mean, if I made them both the same long, okay, it kind of gets really messed I up in your head. So yeah, you're like, what am I supposed to do? So make sure you're, you're keeping them kind of like that, okay? 15 over 10. Okay, so now I'm going to go times, change this to 3 tenths, and I end up getting 5 times 3 is 15, 1 times 10 is 10. She equals 1 and 1 half. Which equals 1 and 5 tenths, which equals 1 and 1 half. Very good. Yes. Great job. Everybody feels like they understand? Yes. Okay, what happens, I want y'all to do this one on your paper, and then I'll check it. Okay? This one is going to do um, two mixed numbers. Okay? And don't pay attention. It's going to be a Y, but it means no different. Okay? Than an X. All right. Work that problem. Two and a half Y equals one and seven eighths. Yes? What did we get wrong? Yes. Do you mind coming up and working it? Oh, All right. Claire's going to come up and work it. I want y'all to see if she did what y'all y'all did what she does. Okay? Because she got it right. You want to paper? I'm going to look at it. I think I got it. Okay, first I did four. Girls. Four. Okay, so first she changed it to an improper fraction. And that would become 15 over 8. Very good. Changed both mixed numbers into improper fractions. So now I'm going to do 15 over 8 divided by 5 over 2, but then you have to change it to 15 over 8 times 6 equals 30. 40 and you can just cross this off. Very good. So your answer is three fourths. Now she did make a few um, quicker, I guess, not as as um, drawn out exactly what she did. Okay, so she didn't like show that she moved this over. She just did it. Okay, so you should have gotten three fourths. All right, this would have become five halves, and this would have become 15 eighths. And we moved five halves over here. That's when we divided it, okay? And then it changed to two-fifths once we multiplied, okay? So, now, there's one last part to this lesson. Okay, so far you learned coefficients. Now you're doing negative. So, basically, we're going to learn negative numbers inside coefficients. So, for example, negative two-thirds x equals four-fifths. Now, this is not that much harder, but I want you to really pay attention. What is this saying? Negative two-thirds times, times x. Okay, so we're still multiplying negative two-thirds times x. And if I want to get the x by itself, what do I do? Oh, you have to two-thirds under the four-fifths. Yes, okay, so it says because it says times negative two-thirds, I'm going to move it over and but now it's going to be divided. I'm going to make it longer divided by negative two-thirds, okay? 
Now, what's my next step? Yes. Um, is it two negative, like a negative and a positive will always be negative? We're going to, so we're, yes, we'll get into that in just a minute. What's my next step, though? Oh, you got to divide this by two. Three. Yeah, so we need to write it out horizontally, okay, because it's kind of hard to look at it like that. So four-fifths divided by negative two-thirds. You need to see this negative not as negative two, but it's just negative two-thirds. It's the whole number. Okay, so just pretend like this is a normal number. Okay, now this um, divide becomes times, and then you change this to three over two. Okay, I still keep my negative there because this is the negative of the fullness of the number. Okay, now, if it helps you in your brain to write out normal numbers, for example, four times negative three, to see what your answer would be, do that, you would know that, okay, I'm doing a positive number and I'm doing a negative number, so if I have opposites, my answer is going to be negative. So I know just by looking at this, I have one positive and one negative, that my answer is going to be negative, okay? So this is just to help me. If, you don't, if your brain doesn't need that, then let's just go back up to here, okay? And so now I'm going to go, don't pay attention to the negative right now. 4 times 3, 12. 5 times 2, 10. Now, look at the negatives. I have one negative and one positive. If I have opposites, I know that the answer is going to be negative. So I'm going to put a negative there now. Okay? But is it done? No. No. We need to find the mixed number. Okay? So what would it be? One and two tenths. What? One and two tenths. One and two tenths. Okay? One and... Whoops. Two tenths, and then when I... One and one one fifth. Fifth. Very good. And then when I reduce that, it'd be one and one fifth. Negative. Negative. Thank you very much. And don't forget that. All right? Keep bringing your negative over. Now, see, the book, all it did was reduce this. And it said that it was negative six. Somebody from Texas. Okay. So now this one, all they did in the book was went 12 divided by 2 is 6. 12, uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And so then they put their negative. So this was their answer. Okay? That's okay. Okay? But this is, uh, that's what I'm saying. For some reason uh, about this lesson, and from here on out, they'll only do improper fractions and not make you make it into a mixed. But I want you to do both. Okay? So, has everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Lesson 9.